Good day, everyone. Uh, my name is Anastasios Gavras from Eurascom GmbH in Germany. And I will talk today about uh, a, an activity that we started, which is, in fact, a project um, which, um, well, tries at least to consider lots of the aspects that have been discussed so far today, so namely the, the, the human aspect in the whole value chain of uh, of uh, technology as we experience this today, uh, also in the context of future internet and not only. Uh, we call it future internet social and technological alignment. Um, and here we try to take uh, also the, a uh, little bit of the opposite approach of bringing not, uh, not a kind of a technology push only, but also uh, try to see from the user perspective, from the, from the human perspective, what are the needs actually, when where technology needs actually to adapt in order to be usable for the, uh, for the users. And uh, this means not only the users of the technology, but also the people that are actually impacted by the technology. <coughs> um, I, I may comment also during my presentation on some of the statements I heard here uh, before, for example, the thing about a platform, I mean, platforms, many people build platforms, but the real usable platforms at the end that have a, a real added value are very, very few. Uh, I mean, building a platform we know since many years now uh, doesn't pay off with one, with one use case or with one uh, example application. You need really a lot of them to be uh, able to say, well, this paid off, this platform, uh, building this platform. So in a way, um, um, this um, uh, will, will be perhaps uh, concluded in some point in the future whether the platforms that we build here, uh, for example, in this context of the future internet uh, PPP, uh, will bring us a real added value of across, across a whole set of, of uh, applications and also sector applications in order to say, well, it was worth it. Um, Anyway, so the other thing is that we have uh, uh, a lot of technologies that uh, experience this, uh, this uh, hype cycle, which is a, cop a graph that I copied from Gartner Group, uh, where we have uh, a very high peak of uh, expectations in the beginning when we see some wonderful technology somewhere. And uh, very shortly after, there is this, uh, this uh, illusionment uh, where we actually realize that some technology in the real world is, is useless or has so many problems, in fact, to take off uh, that, um, well, maybe people give up at this point or other people take other directions and so on. Now, after that, we become realism, <coughs> uh, realists and then we try to see, well, let's actually see what we really can do with this new piece of technology. And then we enter somewhere the productivity uh, uh, time where, where this technology gets introduced uh, and, uh, and, and is used. Now this one in the area uh, where this project is about, which is e-health and well-being, uh, so a little bit broader than just e-health, um, refers actually to the hype that was generated only very few years back by the big companies <coughs> operating large cloud infrastructure and say, come here, store your data, your patient data, your health data, we'll manage it for you. And um, I think you know who I'm talking about. These are some big uh, shots like Google or Microsoft. Um, but if we actually look what's today there, uh, that's really the disillusionment. So Google basically gave up, so said, okay, we stopped the service because nobody is actually wanting to push their private data, their patient data onto, into, into the cloud for obvious reasons. I mean, in Europe, we have also legislation in place which does not allow uh, a hospital, for example, to, to move data outside of the data center of the hospital. So it's also, well, not only because people don't want to do that, they are not allowed to do that by legislation. Uh, so Google gave up. Uh, this is the Microsoft offer, Health Vault, which uh, is now a different thing, is a kind of a voluntary thing. So it, Microsoft does not ask you now to move all your patient data into the cloud, but it says, okay, give us what you would like uh, to, to entrust on us. So, and this is now actually a service that is used uh, more or less in this uh, secondary health market, if you like. Uh, I think it's the right word. I'm not actually sure. Uh, where people, 
use services that are uh, meant to actually improve their lifestyle uh, or keep an eye on their lifestyle and, and uh, try to find, to identify factors that may influence their health in the long run. So like, uh, uh, I don't know if they are doing regular exercises and things like that. So things that are not, well, still personal somehow, but people or some people still uh, are, are wanting to share that. Now going back to platforms, um, uh, there are some much more exciting uh, uh, applications uh, that do that. Uh, if we look into platforms like uh, uh, like the Facebook itself, which I consider the Facebook uh, service uh, uh, as a platform actually for edit uh, uh, applications, so value added applications on the running on top of Facebook, or the applications that you can find in all these uh, app stores like in the Apple App Store or the, the different Android uh, stores. So these type of things are in my understanding uh, the platforms that are actually now uh, that have emerged into, a, into, a, into a, a, a useful service for many people and many applications to actually use this common functionality that is provided by the platform, something basically similar than we are trying now to build in this uh, future internet uh, PPP in the, 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 the FIWare pro, uh, project. Um, <coughs> now, if we look why healthcare in this case and why healthcare could be or in fact is a very interesting uh, use case in this context, um, you see perhaps this figure, I, I mean the details are not important there, it's just important to see that, that the trends uh, today uh, basically say that the, the expenditure in health is, is much, it's, it's increasing much faster than the GDP. So these are recent figures from the OECD, right, which says that the, the, the increase in health expenditure is 4% is, uh, is annually compared with 1.6% of the GDP. Now that's a very worrying figure, right? If you think a few years in the future, then uh, we, we would be spending a significant part of the GDP only on health. Now, of course, we have to give up somewhere else. Uh, uh, and then the question is, where do we give up? Or do we need to find ways of, of basically somehow limiting this figure, which means that we need to use some resources, some services, much more efficiently and effectively uh, in, the, in, the, in the long run. Actually, not even in the long run, in the shorter term, even. And there is another trend that, is, um, that can be observed, is that uh, uh, many people, many patients today, uh, are actually not kept in hospitals, but care is, is kind of distributed outside hospitals, so they, they are treated at homes, they are treated in the general practitioner practices, at nursing homes, or even surgeries are, are done on the day and then you are out of the hospital and so on, which, which in fact is a sort of virtualization of care, as, as I tried to indicate in this figure below there, uh, where from a centralized system of, of healthcare provisioning, uh, we are moving into a decentralized system of healthcare provisioning. Decentralized, of course, means automatically we have to communicate from all these different smaller bubbles there on the, on the figure uh, to, to, to actually provision these, these healthcare services. And, um, well, this is, this is what, uh, in this project, we try now to address what are the implications and the impact that we have uh, if we try to implement this model or if we try to support this model in a much more efficient way, in a much more cost-efficient way, especially. So we have this project now, which is called FISTAR, as I mentioned in the beginning. I think this is, this is uh, the usual blah blah that you find in all project uh, overview descriptions. I think the only important thing here uh, is, uh, is the, the third sub-bullet, because we try there to to introduce a paradigm shift because of the problem that, that we have that we cannot move data into the cloud. So, I mean, moving data into the cloud means basically moving data where the processing power is and where the storage power is. So we try to reverse that and say, okay, let's move the, the computation power and storage power to the data. So effectively deploy clouds in the local nodes where the data exists. And, and where they are not allowed actually to, to move out. 
so this is one of the technologies that uh, uh, we think are relevant here, and we believe that uh, the current uh, concepts in, in the future Internet PVP with these enablers allow us, in fact, to do that. We can deploy enablers in the data centers of the hospital because the, the bare metal, if you like, the raw processing power is available there. It is just not uh, in the form usable as it is, for example, in oil, in the Open Innovation Lab, which is one of the nodes in the EFI PVP. <clears throat> so we're, we're trying now to, to do this just to, to basically mitigate one of the very basic requirements and very hard requirements that exist in this sector of, uh, of not being able to move data freely around in, in the clouds. Um, right. So this is a figure that tries to illustrate that uh, we, we have partitioned our system in, in basically two things. There is certainly a number of things, a lot of things that can be done in the cloud because there are no sensitive data. I mean, if you look into things like invoicing and clearance of, of payments uh, with doctors, with insurance companies and so on, that's something that can be, can be outsourced into, into the cloud. But when it comes to patient data like uh, x-rays and so on, these things need to stay in the hospital. So we partition that in a provider edge. So provider means somewhere where services by a third party could actually be provided. Um, and uh, the consumer edge where the consumer means the healthcare providers, so the service providers in healthcare, uh, use this ICT technology to, to offer their services. Uh, so in, in any case, <coughs> the main, that's one of the main characteristics of the technology uh, use, if you like. I mean, we're not developing so much new technology, we're using the technology that comes from, from fewer. <coughs> And we try to accommodate this model, in fact, to, to, uh, to show also that this is actually possible and we don't need to rely only on certain, uh, <coughs> let's say, big nodes in the, in the network somewhere in the clouds where this uh, uh, almost or virtually unlimited capacity in storage and computation and even communication is available. Uh, we thought a little bit about what this has as an impact on the, on the, on the value chain. Uh, especially on the value chain of how this technology is, uh, is uh, actually provisioned and how the, the business model could look like. Uh, I don't want to bore you with too much details, but effectively uh, this, one, this, uh, this image here, uh, this figure here, just I illustrates that, uh, that there is potentially a new uh, business role that uh, uh, can emerge, and that is the middle part, the service provisioning market, where, uh, where a service provider is responsible for actually deploying into the consumer edge, basically into the hospitals, the necessary um, technology or the necessary computation uh, uh, capabilities to be able to, to handle all these uh, requirements in, in the hospitals, for example. So this is something that today exists in some form or other, but it is a little bit, I would say, disconnected from what we are doing uh, in, uh, in, in other fields of, of, of ICT. Now, another very basic requirement here is uh, something that has not been discussed so far in the FIPVP, at least, is the requirement for certification. So everything that goes uh, into healthcare, I think it was mentioned by in the first uh, session, that there are very high requirements when you offer some service or some product into, the, into this market that you have to pass all sorts of certification uh, through some accredited organizations and institutions in order to get approval to offer something in the healthcare. So anything that uh, touches any data that uh, is related to this sector has basically to have this certificate or this certificates even in, in many cases. So we, we have this also on the, on the, uh, in, the, in the model here that there is someone that will be uh, there to, to certify the correct behavior of certain components that are then deployed into the, the hospitals. Um, I think this is more or less what I wanted to share with you on that. I share only some contacts with you. Please have a look at the website. There we have a large number of uh, what we call uh, trials. 
um, or from all sorts of different uh, uh, um, well cases in the healthcare, ranging from, of course, just normal treatment of patients or aftercare, uh, but also up to the to the tracing or reverse supply chain uh, engineering of, for example, pharmaceuticals was also discussed in the first session that uh, certain pills may not arrive to the right patient. So this is also one use case we have so that, for example, if errors are done somehow somewhere in the delivery chain, they can be actually traced down to the single patient that will receive uh, some, some medication. So basically to do a recall on the single pill or medication when it has already arrived at the final customer. Okay, thank you very much.